Okay, so let's talk about prostate cancer screening. And the backbone of prostate cancer screening is the PSA test. PSA stands for prostate specific antigen, and it's a blood test that's used for prostate cancer screening. So PSA first became FDA approved for prostate cancer screening in 1994. And in the 90s, it was very widely spread used uh, in a lot of men. And this probably led to a lot of over diagnosis and over treatment, especially in elderly men. So much so that in 2008, the US Pre Preventative Services Task Force recommended against screening for any man over the age of 75. Now, the reason for this is that if you find prostate cancer in a man in his late 70s, it's likely not going to kill him. He's probably going to die from something else. And that's what makes prostate cancer somewhat unique in this way. Unlike other cancers that as soon as you find the slightest trace of it, you need to take it out. Prostate cancer is not really that way. It's very common. About one in eight American men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. And most of them would be just fine if you left them alone because prostate cancer tends to affect older men and it, take, it tends to take many years to spread and cause problems. So the challenge with prostate cancer screening is to find the men with the aggressive prostate cancers who have a long life expectancy and are unlikely to die from something else in the next 15 to 20 years. And to basically leave alone the older men with the lower risk prostate cancers. And so that's sort of the, the art of prostate cancer screening and the balance that we've all been trying to, to strike for, for decades. Now the pendulum really swung the opposite direction in 2012 when the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommended against prostate cancer screening for all men, regardless of age. So this was a, a really big blow, mainly because it meant that people would just show up to the emergency room once the prostate cancer had already spread to their bones. And at that point, there would be no, no hope in curing it. But this obviously created a lot of frustration in the urologic community because this preventative services task force had no urologist on it. And the preventative services task force just felt that the urologists were doing way too much diagnosis and way too much treatment and causing a lot of harm in men who did not need to have their prostate cancers diagnosed or treated. So this sort of caused a lot of men to, to miss the window uh, to be treated. Now, in 2018, the U.S. Pre Preventative Services Task Force did issue an update to that. They said that men aged 55 to 69 could be screened if they discussed it with their, with their physician about the pros and cons of screening, but they still recommended against screening for all men over the age of 70, no longer 75. Now, anyone over the age of 70, they recommended screening against. Now, in 2023, the American Urologic Association released their updated recommendation, and this was for men aged 50 to 69, so not 55, but going down to 50 to 69, that patients should be offered prostate cancer screening, that the risks and benefits of screening should be offered uh, to men in this age group. They also state that going down to age 45 is even reasonable for men to, to begin doing the, the screening, they still generally recommend against screening in men over the age of 70. Again, you're likely not going to die of prostate cancer once you're, once you're in your 70s. Now in 2024, the European Association of Urology released their own guidelines, which were very similar to the American ones, but had a couple of differences. One was that they recommended the use of MRI before doing a prostate biopsy. And they also, number two, recommended doing transperineal prostate biopsies over transrectal biopsies. So these are a couple of important points. Transperineal means through the skin in the perineum. The perineum is the skin between the scrotum and the anus, and you can basically pass a needle through there directly into the prostate. The classic way of doing prostate biopsies is transrectal, where the needle actually goes through the rectum into the prostate. And this caused a lot of problems because as you can imagine, that transrectal needle is introducing a lot of bacteria into the prostate and can be a major cause of infection. 
So classically, men are given high doses of antibiotics before doing a transrectal biopsy. And even then, they have a 2% risk of sepsis, which is a very serious life-threatening infection. So prostate biopsy itself caused a lot of harm, even in just looking for prostate cancer. So that was part of the reason why the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force was recommending against it those years ago because of all the overdiagnosis of all the issues with giving so many people antibiotics and causing sepsis in 2% of these men who were older and had a lot of other medical issues and some of them died from it in screening for a condition that they would have never had an issue with to begin with. So with the transperineal biopsy, now the risk of infection is essentially zero and you don't need to give people these high gun antibiotics. So we sort of lowered the burden of of a biopsy. A biopsy is not as risky of a decision as it used to be. And with the recommendation to do an MRI before the biopsy, you actually decrease the number of biopsies that need to be done. Because the thought is that if the MRI does not show any concerning lesions, the chances that there's a significant prostate cancer that's going to kill you is very low. Again, it's not zero, so you still need to keep trending the PSA and having that discussion should we go ahead and do a biopsy anyways but you can probably safely put it off for, for a while, especially if the PSA is not going up and up. So we've sort of got into this state now where the pendulum has shifted back towards the middle, where it's more prostate cancer screening with the PSA is reasonable as long as you do it the right way. You don't screen elderly men over the age of 70. You don't screen men who have a life expectancy less than 15 years because you're not going to help them by diagnosing them with prostate cancer anyways. And also, if somebody has an elevated PSA, you don't go straight to doing a transrectal biopsy and causing a 2% sepsis. You get an MRI first. And only in the people with concerning lesions, you then do a transperineal biopsy, which doesn't have that infection risk. And then you get to the next point, which is what do you do with somebody who's diagnosed with prostate cancer? The first step is to risk stratify them. Are they a high risk prostate cancer patient, intermediate or low risk? And that is a very important distinction. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, anybody with any prostate cancer generally got treated. They had their prostate removed surgically or radiated. So what, there wasn't just a problem of overdiagnosis, there was a problem of overtreatment causing a lot of harm. Now, the recommendation generally for low-risk prostate cancer is active surveillance, meaning essentially doing nothing other than checking the PSA again in the future, maybe getting another MRI and another biopsy down the line to make sure it's safe to continue surveilling and not treating. So we're trying to only offer treatment to the men with intermediate or high-risk prostate cancer who have a, life, a long life expectancy and are at risk of dying from prostate cancer and trying to leave the other men alone. So by reducing the number of men that need to get screened, and then by only doing biopsies on the ones that have a concerning MRI, and then doing the transperineal biopsy to lower the morbidity of a biopsy, and then only treating the people with the higher risk cancers who have a long life expectancy, we are doing a more graduated approach or a balanced approach where we're really trying to avoid overdiagnosis and overtreatment, but still not completely abandon prostate cancer screening entirely and having men showing up to the emergency room with prostate cancer in their bones. So it's a very nuanced science. There's a lot of shared decision-making between physicians and patients. So if you are a man in the age group of say 45 to 69, you should talk with your doctor about the risks and benefits of prostate cancer screening. And most of the time that just entails a PSA, which is just a simple blood test, the classic digital rectal exam where the finger goes in the rectum to feel the back of the prostate has been shown to add very little, if any value. So it doesn't really need to be done. So you don't need to be afraid that the doctor is going to do that exam for you. You should just have your PSA screened or at least talk with your doctor about the risks and benefits of screening.